what's good y'all it's your boy ross back out again with another video so we're gonna check out aj lee wwe rumors the real truth behind the cm punk fight rikishi wrestlemania 40 return and other wrestling news this should be very interesting looking forward to seeing what's going on uh wrestling uh related news wise should be a good video let's check this out together y'all appreciate all the love and support we're gonna get right into this one not wasting any more time let's do it what is going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including rumors on additional mania matches aj lee return update booker t's bs rakishi mm. picks this ooze to win at wrestlemania Cody Rhodes WrestleMania surprise, the real reason why Undertaker vs Sting never happened, and much more. Should be Should very interesting, man. Hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Now, let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Now, first story looks on rumors on additional Mania matches. On top of today's news is a rumor from WrestleVotes about the final lineup for WrestleMania. The indication from sources suggests we'll see up to four more WrestleMania matches announced for the event. As of now, the working plan is to feature seven matches per night on the main Damn. card. Seven matches for each night seems to fit in with Triple Damn. H's habit of booking five matches on regular PLEs and up to six to seven on big four I guess events. that makes sense. Although the Rumble only had four bouts. It's unknown whether the game intends to continue the WWE's recent policy of booking matches on SmackDown that couldn't fit into WrestleMania due to time constraints. It also remains to be seen whether there'll be any matches on the WWE's pre-show. What last minute matches do you think WWE will book for the event? Let us know in the comments down below. Seven matches per night? Not bad. It's WrestleMania. It's not bad. I know some people have said, you know, some of these, the recent pay-per-views have been, you know, it's only been like maybe four or five matches, which once again, these are theme related pay-per-views like the Royal Rumble, men's and women's Royal Rumble match was going to take up a lot of time. So you didn't really need too many matches in between them. And the same thing with the Elimination Chamber, men's and women's Elimination Chamber is going to take up a lot of time. Um, so seven matches per night. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that is a lot of matches. If you really think about it, seven matches per night. That is, is kind of on the it it that I guess you could say that's that's a decent amount. But that means the matches for the most part, not all of them, but for the most part, they shouldn't be that long. The the matches that's probably gonna take probably the most time is obviously the the ones with the a lot of story behind them. Um, the tag team match with seth and cody versus roman and the rock that's probably gonna take some time uh for the uh that first night i'm thinking the bailey versus uh eo that probably i think they should give that some time as well bianca uh not bianca uh Rhea versus um Becky, they should probably give that some time. The main event with Cody versus Roman, you know that's going to be like a damn near 40-minute match. Uh, Seth versus Drew, I don't know if that's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to be honest with you. I, they, they may give them maybe 15, maybe 15 to 20, maybe. I'm not sure. It depends on how they want to book that, but that, that could possibly take some time. So there's some matches on there that's going to, you know, definitely run it up but uh if you're gonna have seven matches per night some of the matches are gonna probably be 15 or less it would have to be it depends on how they do it i know the gunther versus Sami Zayn. they at least need to give them 20 minutes because i know they're gonna cook so i don't know it's gonna be very interesting to see how they they uh set that up time wise next up aj lee return update is aj lee returning to wwe the WWE Universe seems welcome to the idea based on fan chatter on social media and CM Punk's WWE return has made AJ the source of serious speculation. In an exclusive report from SE Scoops, Aaron Farbel noted, There's been talk circulating that AJ Lee might return to WWE following CM Punk's comeback with discussions reportedly initiated through Punk prior to the Royal Rumble but ultimately they didn't materialize. 
Despite ongoing efforts from WWE, AJ Lee reportedly desires a memorable return rather than a one-time appearance. Mm -hmm. At one point, some WWE fans thought AJ might make a surprise appearance at the 2024 Rumble. That didn't happen, and the idea that Lee was interested in an extended return, perhaps like Trish Stratus' return last year, seemed to make sense. And Varble tweeted, There's a new story about AJ Lee's WWE return going around, so I have a new answer, but it's one you probably don't want to hear. I'm told that there have been no talks with or about AJ Lee making a WWE return. I'm told that she's very well liked and respected, just not a topic at the moment. Do you mm. think AJ Lee will ever return to wrestling? Let us know in the comments down below. Nick I could possibly see that. I can definitely possibly see her returning it. I would not be opposed to it. It'd be very interesting to see what stories she can tell with the women now because wrestling women's wrestling is so much different in wwe compared to when she was there so i know that would be something uh i think she would be uh excited to really link up and have these matches with these women because it ain't traditional like it used to be they're they're actually women wrestlers on the roster that can go legitimately so i think that would be awesome to see you know, and, and where that can go. So I'm sure, it, you know, I can see it happening. It, it may not be the topic of discussion now, or maybe they're keeping it under wraps, but I would not be surprised sometime this year. She does make a return. That would be pretty cool. Not going to lie to you. So we'll see. But, you know, right now it's not a rush for it. Next up, Trish Stratus defends green WWE star. I add Trish Stratus to the list of WWE stars who are defending Maxine Dupree's well, in-ring work as she continues her journey of becoming a WWE star. Dupree has been booed at events and the subject of online criticism from people who feel like her work isn't at a main roster level. During an interview with Slam Wrestling, Stratus shared her thoughts on Dupree's situation. I think Maxine is doing amazing. I think she's being booked perfectly. I see similar parallels to the way I was booked early on. I believe I have this connection with the fans because of how I came up. I didn't do the traditional upbringing. I didn't come in trained. I didn't do the indies or the minor leagues, so to speak. I literally learned on the road. I learned as I went and everyone was along for the journey. They got to see me fall down, but they also got to see me stand up, dust myself off and try again. And I think she's doing a great job. While it may be hard to believe Trish Stratus' early work as a wrestler was borderline awful, she mm -hmm. busted her back to improve, eventually becoming the WWE's top female performer. As far as Stratus is concerned, Dupree has a lot going for her, with Trish noting Dupree is athletic, she's got a great look, and she's gorgeous. Trish added that Dupree should use the negativity to motivate herself into becoming the wrestler she wants to be. As for Dupree's critics, Stratus didn't hold back. I think these keyboard warriors have no idea what we do. I suffered it too. They were like, oh, that match was crap. Well, you try it. I love that the women banded together because we all get it. We all go through it. We live it. And it affects us, you know? We have feelings. So when people say something mean, it doesn't feel that great. Stratus said that she's glad that she and her fellow wrestlers can band together on social media. While some people seem to be trolling Dupree and criticizing her for no other reason than to be hurtful, what are fans who feel she shouldn't be wrestling on the main mm. roster yet due to her lack of fundamentals? Do fans have say in the product WWE puts out? Well, Stratus' invitation for fans to step into the ring rings hollow when fans are paying customers who expect a certain level of quality. Fans complaining about a wrestling product are no different than people who complain about a bad meal at a restaurant or yeah. a bad movie they paid to see. The customer doesn't have to be a chef or a movie director to know that something is bad. Facts. It's all about how the consumer goes about voicing their dissatisfaction. Next up, and And here's the thing about that. I get it. Trish was able to get better. She she was not good when she first started. I mean, most people who first start doing things, you know, obviously are not going to be that good. You know, it, it takes time to get better. And I I don't the people that are just being assholes for the sake of being assholes. We don't pay those no mind. But the people that are actually being honest and saying she's not good in the ring, which is true, then they shouldn't. People shouldn't, I guess you could say, come at them for voicing their opinions when, one, they are watching the product. Two, if they paid money to go to a show, they have the right to voice their opinion. If the opinion is not favorable, then, it. I mean, it's it's part of the wrestling business. How many of your favorite wrestlers got booed at one point? And they were probably pretty decent, but people didn't care for them. People didn't like their character. People thought they were lame, whatever the case may be. So... And I get it, that may hurt people's feelings, but that you're in the wrestling business. You're going to get your, at some point, a fan's going to be mean to you. 
Someone's going to say something mean to you. Hell, some of your peers, some of your other fellow wrestlers are going to say something mean to you behind the scenes. All you got to... All you can do is take that negativity and prove them wrong and prove yourself right. Prove why you deserve to be there. So Maxine does have an opportunity to get better and get better. I just don't think she should harp on the negativity that much. She shouldn't harp on it. In fact, they're turning the negativity into a storyline with her. So I think she needs to focus on her craft, try to get better. Because fans are going to say whatever they want to say. They have the money. If they have the money to be at the shows or watch, all right, cool. But to hit the notion, well, you try it. Well, they're not wrestlers. We're fans. So, of course, we're not going to know what to do. Of course, it's, we know it's difficult. If someone's saying, I can do that, I, I doubt it. But if they're just voicing their opinions like, no, nah, she's not good in the ring, which she isn't. I don't see what the problem is. Unless they're just being toxic and rude. No, but I understand wrestlers are going to stick together. That's cool, but we got to keep it a buck. She's not good. She can get better, and hopefully she does so she can prove all of us wrong. I'm all for it. But right now, she's not there yet. It's going to take some time. That's all it is. Booker T's BS. Was Booker T embellishing the facts when he claimed on his podcast that he and CM Punk had some sort of altercation when Punk visited NXT during yeah, the 12th March taping? We heard about there this. There were doubts from the get-go as Punk had reportedly been on his best behavior since returning to WWE at Survivor Series. And now Booker is actually admitting that the story was completely fabricated. Hmm? The two-time WWE Hall of Famer revealed in his Hall of Fame podcast, I'm trying to entertain my fans because that story, that 40-second story that people wrote, it was clickbait, guys. Did I put it out there? Did I say it? As far as I had a beef, I was gonna run up? Yeah, I said it, but I'm entertaining you guys. Entertaining, just playing around. Our wrestling fans have come to expect such nonsense from certain podcasters, with Booker seeming to be one of the worst culprits who likes to stir the pot with an apparent goal of getting more viewers. Unfortunately, not all listeners are savvy to podcasters with a penchant for promoting fake news. With all that's been going on with CM Punk's behavior recently, it was a poor decision to put such a story out. What do you think of Booker's BS, though? Yeah. Let us know in the comments down below. I get it, and I, I, I love you, Booker, but come on, bro. That's why I didn't even talk about it, because I wasn't really sure. When he said it, I wasn't really sure what was going on when he dropped that news, so I didn't really talk about it. I saw it on Twitter and stuff. But come on, Booker. Come on, man. You're Booker T, bro. People are going to check out what you have to say and your opinions on stuff regardless. You're Booker T. You're a legend in this business. I think you're above that. This is coming from somebody who does YouTube and content creation full time. You're above that level of clickbait. Come on, man. You already know. People are waiting to, to see CM Punk crash and burn. Come on. Unless CM Punk knew, I don't know. I just, me personally, I wouldn't have did that. That's just my personal opinion on it. I wouldn't have, you know, clickbaited like that to get people to check out my podcast and stuff like that. That's just me. Uh, I think you could have could have did that a little bit better, Booker. That's just my personal opinion on it. Next up, Rikishi picks this ooze to win at WrestleMania. Uh -oh. How does Rikishi feel about his sons Jay and Jimmy battling each other at WrestleMania 40? While well, the Hall of Famer discussed things on his Rikishi Fatu off the top rope podcast saying, Man, that's exciting news. I'm excited to be able to have the boys out there. Another historic bloodline family tree, whatever you want to call it. But to have my sons out there on WrestleMania finally going after it together, this is a big deal for the whole fans. You're finally going to see the dream match. Uso versus Uso, Yeet versus No Yeet. It's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. Very happy to be the last to know about it. One of the questions that often comes up with the bloodline is whether Rikishi will appear in some capacity. Yeah. Rikishi has hinted at appearing before and he's doing so again. I'm not too far from WrestleCon. I'll be there at WrestleCon. I'll be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm not too far. That's all I can say. I'm not too far from the stadium. I'm not too far from the stadium mm. where WrestleMania will be. Whether or not Rikishi shows I up hope is so. something fans will likely have to wait until WrestleMania. But for the man who did it for The Rock, he knows <laughs> who should go over for the win. Jey Uso. Jay and Jimmy's dad acknowledge both men have had great careers, but the right business move would be to put main event Jay over. Regardless, mm. Rikishi said the match is a win-win situation. To see my sons going against each other for this dream match for the fans, it's a win situation for the fans, for the company, for the family, and I'm so proud of them. Jay and Jimmy are sure to put on a great match, but they'll have lots of competition for the best match honors at WrestleMania, as yeah. there are some huge matches booked for the event. Next up is... Nah, that's a, that's a crazy one too. 
because the obvious choice would be Jay. The obvious choice would be Jay. But I think the swerve could be maybe Jimmy doing pulling it off. Because Jay's going to be fine. But I think Jimmy could use that win. But I it doesn't is I don't think it's going to be a flat out if Jimmy and I'm I'm going to do my preview and predictions when it's time. But I'm thinking if it is a situation where Jay looks like he could get the win. Maybe he could put him away. I don't know. And maybe he hesitates because that's his brother and he he looks up to his brother still. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. That 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 could be maybe it's a situation where he hears if he doesn't win, he'll have to deal with the bloodline. And maybe Jay sacrifices himself because he knows his family's gonna try to destroy him. So he's trying to he's actually trying to save him. Like Jimmy quote unquote said he was saving Jay. I, I it could be a situation where the stipulation maybe Roman says or whoever says, if you don't beat Jimmy, I mean Jay at this year's WrestleMania, you're gonna have consequences to deal with. And you know how them consequences can be. Something like that. And maybe maybe a situation where Jay is like, you know what? Not laying down for him, but he, he doesn't want to beat him. And that hesitation gives Jimmy the out. I don't know. So we'll see. That that's that's a tough one. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's a tough one. I don't know how that's gonna play out. Spoilers, Cody Rhodes WrestleMania surprise. Now it's time for a possible spoiler on Cody Rhodes' entrance at WrestleMania 40 for when he wrestles Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. All right. Skip to the next story if you don't want us to spoil the surprise. Now, according to Downstreet, Zach right. Hall, the band's lead singer, there may be a live performance of Cody's entrance, Ooh. Kingdom. Hall spoke with wrestling news as Steve that Hall about his cool. and his band's involvement with Cody's entrance theme. Steve asked Zach whether he plans to be at WrestleMania 40. So we're going to leave that at an announcement on 5th April 2024 and all of our teasers. We'll have to wait and see what's going on there. I can tell you this, I will be in Philadelphia WrestleMania oh, yeah. weekend. All followed up by asking oh, Paul yeah. whether he'll be at Mania as a fan or a performer with the singer responding, I'm always a fan. We will also praise Cody for helping the band during the American Nightmares negotiations to return to WWE. According to the band's frontman, Cody told WWE officials his theme was coming with him to the WWE mm -hmm. or he wasn't going to make the jump. This was a big Simple. boost for the band's reputation as well as their pocketbook. Yep. And finally, the real reason- Which is awesome. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. There's, you can't have Cody come back from AEW without that theme. And they that means WWE had to pay out them rights. They had to pay out them, hey, if we're using the theme every time, we got to pay you. And it worked. That's awesome. Fucking awesome. I hope they do perform his song, his theme song live. That shit going to be lit, bro. It's just going to be super cool, bro. And then he got a fucking win. You can't have this nigga come out to a live band playing his theme to fucking lose. You better have this motherfucker win, bro. <laughs> Reason why Undertaker versus Sting never happened. Last but not least, The Undertaker has been revealing some more behind the scenes stories thanks to his One Dead Man show, as well as his Six Feet Under with Mark Calloway series on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now the phenom is revealing why fans never got to see him battle Sting in WWE. It just didn't work out. He had a short run in WWE and Vince didn't want it. For whatever reason, I don't know what it was, he didn't feel it. Everybody else was clamoring for this match for quite a few years. Taker shared his opinion on how the match would have played out. The match would have been good, but I don't think it would have lived up to the expectations that people have for it. People always think about things in a certain sense. I think they thought in their mind of Undertaker 2007 or 2008 versus Sting. Yeah. It was later on than that. I can say I was way on the backside of what I was going to do when he got there. Taker praised how Sting was booked in AEW and that Sting and the promotion used him wisely and protected him with the matches and opponents he faced. Do you think Taker versus Sting could have been a classic? It could have been a classic. It, it definitely could have been a classic. It, it could have. I'm, I'm, I'm being dead ass. I, I think this. I think this is a match you put on, and I think you know you give them 15 minutes, the nostalgia ride. I think this would have been fine, bro. Dead ass. I think this would have been fine. I get it. It was you know kind of the, the later years of you know the Undertaker and stuff like that. But I think if you would have given them enough time, enough build. You know, I, I think this could have been fine. I think this would have worked. Vince didn't want to see it, which is fucking... Sh so we had an opportunity to get it. It's just Vince was fucking Vince, bro. You didn't care. That, that's what the fans wanted. He didn't give a fuck, bro. He didn't care. 
we literally could have had that match. Even if The Undertaker's not 100%, I think with the proper timing, proper build, we could. I know The Undertaker would have given his all. I know Sting would have given everything he had to give to make that match the best it possibly could have been. Would it lived up to people's expectations? Hell no. It wouldn't have. There's no way it could have because they were way past their prime, but they still could have put on a match that us fans could have remembered and, and appreciated, bro. <sighs> yep what could have been but comment down below let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k and i'm still here to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace